Well, guys, the day has come. I am super pumped. I, I, no, I'm, I'm actually really excited. Like, you know how sometimes you think about something that's going to be happening in the next day or so, and you, you get that sort of, like, oh, that flutter in your chest, like, yay! Like, that, that's how I felt last night. Like, I literally had that feeling last night thinking about being able to record this video and get started on finally upgrading this whole thing. So December is done, shooting-wise and now I can work on this thing. But before I do it, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a lay down of, or lay down, low down, <laughs> of how my entire setup works here. Um, a lot of people, when I talked in my, my YouTube tips video, I had a lot of people asking if I could do a video about my setup. So that's what I'm gonna do. And this is probably gonna be a very in-depth, detailed thing because this is something, like I said in the last video, it took me five years to get this whole thing set up. Uh, over over a long period of time, just finding little bitty efficiencies here and there. So I'm gonna try to just kind of like walk you through how I got from point A to point B before I head to point C. But the first thing I wanna get across really quickly is that um, you're about to see an utter dumpster fire of a room. Anything outside of right back here is just chaos. There's a guy that I follow, and I, I met him at VidCon recently. His name's Thomas Frank, and he's sort of a productivity expert. He's got a YouTube channel. He did a thing where he was showing off his setup. His was perfectly clean, immaculate. Everything was, you know, at a right angle, and everything was perfect, and uh, my room is not that. Here we go. Let's just start with that. Let's just start with, with what I'm working with here. All right, so this is the room. Hello, printer scanner on the floor. Hello, boxes of weird stuff. Over here, that's Canker Boy. This, as well as all that stacked up behind that door right there. That, this is a very fancy chair that my wife bought me and now holds clothing. This is the setup. This is what I kind of wound up defaulting to to uh, make all my videos. Did I mention dumpster fire? By the way, this has been ever so slightly cleaned up because I had some like sensitive stuff up here with like addresses and stuff like that. I didn't move the Dollar Shave Club razors that I have not gotten out of here just yet. Oh, and yes, I've been a little bit sick lately, so there's the toilet paper that I've been using to blow snot from my face. And Jake heard me talking, so he's gotta come see what's going on. What are you doing, buddy? Everybody loves an old doggo. Oh, he's a good boy. So I mentioned in that last video that um, when I first got started, I was all about like trying to find a different place to set up for every video. Um, so why don't I just start there and, and you can see kind of where things got started and how things got to where they are right now. All right, so in the early, early days of the channel, I used this computer right here, this Mac Tower. Um, I probably used it for about five years or so up until about 2016. It's actually been decommissioned at this point, and I don't know what to do with it. There's actually a, a follower of the channel who lives here locally that refurbishes old computers to give away to lower income families and stuff. And I offered him this computer and he basically said he can't really do anything with it. So I don't know what to do with it. If you guys have any suggestions, please do let me know. And I used to shoot all of my old videos with this. This is a Canon 7D. It's freaking huge really compared to the cameras that I use today. Oh my God, it's so dusty, it's terrible. <laughs> but I would put this up on a um, tripod and you could connect it to the computer and there was an app that you could use that would allow you to control the camera with your computer but you were still recording it locally so when you were done shooting you would have to take the little card out of the camera and stick it into the computer and upload it and then um, you know edit with it and I used to record the audio on this this is a zoom h4n this is a fantastic audio recorder uh, super cheap and simple uh, for anybody who wants to use it but it's got XLR imports imports on the bottom as well as uh, you could put like regular three quarter inch guitar amps in there and stuff like that it's got four channels to record on and uh, it's it's pretty cool so like this is a good location mic you can use that as well what this means is I would record the audio on this I would record the video on that and then I would have to put it into this computer over here and sync it up before I ever got started editing. Also, usually I would shoot it in different locations. Like I said before, I didn't want to shoot all in one location. Um, so I would go around and that meant setting up lights every single time. It was, it was literally a production every single time I shot a video. Uh, this was not sustainable. <laughs> so eventually I settled on the shelf as the background and I went ahead and just put these soft boxes to use. So these are, um, Fluorescent bulbs. Actually, here I can pull this down so you can see inside of there. Um, as you can see, it's just four uh, daylight temperature fluorescent bulbs in there. 
And uh, this gives a good lot soft light. And this is not the best lighting setup, by the way, because that one's at about half power, that's at full power. This is supposed to be more like a fill light, and that's supposed to be more, more of a key light, but they're both kind of right in the same place. Anyway, this isn't the best way to do it. Now, eventually I figured out that you could record sound directly into Adobe Premiere, which is what I was using to do all my editing and stuff. Now, this was kind of a game changer because I didn't have to take the card out of the Zoom and put it in the thing and upload it to the thing and drop it in the project. It was literally like right there in the project. Now, I was still recording the video on the camera and I had to go and sync all that up and everything, but it was one step that I didn't have to take with the audio. And it also kind of got me started thinking about like, hey, could I just record this on my computer? The video? Everything? Yes, you can. This is when I discovered OBS. OBS really is a streaming platform. Um, it's actually made mostly for people who are doing gaming and, and, and streaming and live streams and stuff like that. That was actually the original reason that I got OBS because the live streaming on YouTube is so <laughs> uh, unintuitive. By the way, I'm just holding this, so if it's a little bit shaky, sorry about that. But in order to do live streaming on YouTube, you have to have some kind of live streaming service like OBS. There's one called Wirecast, but it's really expensive. OBS is free. So I uh, was starting to get into the idea of doing live streams, so I downloaded OBS, and that's when I realized, hey, you can just record on OBS. So there, yeah, there's a start streaming and a start recording, and you can set settings to record, you know, set up where you want it to record and everything. In here, you can pick different cameras that you want to select. So now the big challenge became, how do I get a camera <laughs> that will go into OBS so that I can record it? This was a bit of a challenge. And it's a challenge because the 7D, which I tried desperately to make that one work, um, when you have an HDMI out from the camera, it usually has all the information that's on that little screen behind the camera, all the ISO information and shutter speed and all that kind of stuff, which you want when you're shooting stuff, but when you want to clean out into something that's recording it, um, obviously you don't want that crap on the screen. So what you need is a clean HDMI out. And at the time, not a whole lot of cameras uh, did this, and certainly not the 7D. So it was time to retire the 7D. I wound up getting a Sony A6000, which is what's up there right now. And this is my Sony A6000. Right there, the HDMI out, as you can see. And it goes down, hang on. So in order to make this HDMI go into the computer, you need a little help with something called the cam link. So this is from Elgato, and you basically have this regular HDMI cable right here. It plugs into the cam link, and then the cam link uh, actually has a little USB port right there, and I had to get a dongle to go USB-C. And in case you're wondering what the settings were on the camera, well, there you go. Also, I got uh, a little permanent battery thing here. So this is like a dummy battery is what they call it. Normally a battery would be situated in there, but this has the cable that goes out and plugs into the floor. So basically, as long as the computer is on and the camera is plugged into the computer, um, it kind of communicates with it, and, and let's just a little bit, it communicates with it, so that it knows to kind of keep staying on. As long as it's plugged in, it'll never turn off until I unplug it from the computer, which is an issue that I'll get to here in a second. All right, so now I've got it set up so that anytime I want to record, all I have to do is plug in that camera. I usually have to turn it, turn it off and on a couple times to make it kind of connect with what's going on on the computer. But I turn on that camera and I open OBS and I've got my audio, which I'll talk about the microphones here in a second. But I got the audio and uh, it all records right there on OBS. It forms its own video file. And I've got it set so that it saves in a Dropbox file. I'm now working with an editor named Nick, my buddy Nick. And uh, basically it all goes into Dropbox and it pops up on his computer and he just starts editing it. And it's cut down on so many steps. It, that alone took out a good hour's worth of work. And while I'm talking about efficiencies, to go back to these lights for just a second, um, I have these two soft boxes. I didn't even t show you what's behind me. There is another light. You want a backlight, a little uh, uh, punch light for your, for your shoulder. And that is right there. Now, if that looks like a Home Depot clamp light with a static uh, laundry sheet on top of it, that's because that's exactly what that is. That is what is behind me. That is the, <laughs> and it's literally just clamped onto this, this thing back there. This is what's been, I've been using this whole time. And you know what? 
it works just fine. So I've kept it. But here's how obsessed I am with saving steps. I actually got it so that these three lights, instead of having to turn on each light individually, I have it set up now so that all I have to do if I want to turn on a light is flip on this switch and they all come on. So that is how lazy I am. But again, it's just, it saves an extra step. All right, so let's just, let's just dive in to my setup here and I'll show you how all this worked out. I'll give you the lay of the land first and then I'll kind of give you the, the history of how it all kind of got to here. First of all, that computer, that is my one and only computer. <laughs> this computer is a 2016 MacBook Pro with the utterly useless uh, little key bar up there. And, um, I got this computer from B&H Photo when I did the um, the YouTube Next Up program in 2016. So it was like the fall of 2016 when I did that. Part of being selected for that, amongst all the other really cool things, was that you get like a $2,500 gift card to B&H. So with that, I bought this computer. Now, before that, I did have a MacBook Air. <laughs> I'm talking with my hands right now because that's the only thing that's on camera, except for that. This whole thing is weird. I had a MacBook Air before that. It was perfectly fine for doing any kind of writing. Uh, and actually when I used that 7D over there, I would pair it up with my MacBook Air. I would take it around and I would use that to uh, control the computer through that, that Canon app. But anyway, uh, I wound up getting this and it literally took the place of two computers. It took the place of that one and it took the place of the MacBook Air, which I actually wound up selling. So the problem is I was trying to make this computer with all of its inputs down there. Can you even see all those inputs? Yeah, you see all those inputs for various types of USB and Firewire and that kind of thing. And I had to put it on this computer that has four USB-C outlets on it. So I needed a hub. That's what this is. This is the Cal Digit something or other. And um, I'll swing around to the back in a second so you can see where everything's hooked up on there. But that's the audio that goes to the speakers. That's just a powered um, USB. So I usually use that to charge my phone and or my trackpad over here. When you look back here, um, there's several different things. That's the power cord right there. It's got USB-C, USB-C, um, HDMI. So that's actually what connects to the computer over there. Um, this is the internet cable, which I actually don't think does anything, but other USB, other USB. This is just a little uh, extra USB um, dongle so I can connect a whole bunch of stuff to it. That's kind of underused at this point. So basically this connects my computer to the speakers, it connects my computer to the other monitor, and uh, it connects it to all these little dongles and stuff like this, like this uh, little card reader here. It also powers a computer and it connects right over here on this side. Um, it's very, very underpowered though. Actually to the point that if I'm editing something, especially if I'm exporting something, the computer will actually uh, lose power <laughs> um, to the point that I have to plug something else in to keep it going. On this side I've got the white one, that's the dongle for the camera, and then there's this other connector right there. So what is that? Alright, so something that many people have noticed when I record these videos is it can be a little glitchy. You're probably seeing a little bit of that on the screen right now. This is especially true if I have literally any browser open. That's one of the problems with this computer is it's a little bit underpowered to do what I'm trying to do with it. Like it just, it just eats up so much power. In fact, you can look over here and you can see the CPU load when I'm recording, it just jumps up through the roof. So I was trying to find a solution for that. So what I wound up doing, this was earlier this year around, I don't know, spring, March or April, I bought an eGPU. And that's what this thing is. This is uh, the Blackmagic eGPU something or other. This was supposed to make it so that my computer wouldn't be all glitchy whenever I tried to record. Um, it did not work, as you can see. <laughs> I was just doing it a second ago. Basically, I've got this connected to um, some external uh, uh, hard drives right there. And actually, this is where all the storage of the computer is. So this is an external enclosure that uh, I've put four different hard drives into. I think it holds like 11 terabytes. The only, one of the major problems I have with it is it can get kind of loud and uh, kind of whir and make a lot of noise, especially when I'm trying to record stuff that can be super annoying. Uh, let me talk about a few of the peripherals here, some of the audio stuff to start with. So this is the Scarlett uh, TI2, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, 2i2, hello. 
And uh, this is a cool little sound box. It's got two uh, XLR uh, inputs. So this one right here is just a really short cable, and it goes to this radio microphone that uh, I use for podcasting, for OLF, and for a lot of the TMI videos. It's on that nice little swivel stick. Kind of cool. For the normal videos, um, here we got these uh, Sennheiser lav mics. So this is the actual microphone microphone, and that's the transmitter or the receiver right there. This is the transmitter. You might have noticed I'm having some issues with the sound, and this probably is part of why right here. Um, there have been some little glitches and sketches and static noises. I've had these for a while. I've had these microphones for like, I don't know, seven years or so. Uh, I am looking at getting some more. And this is something called the palette, um, and it's dirty and disgusting like everything on this table it's just covered in dust but uh i think now they actually call it monogram as you can see it still says palette there but palette's a much better word than monogram this was uh something i bought to kind of help with editing you can do cuts and stuff by altering and you know it's kind of like a little little desktop thing there but um i actually don't do as much editing as i used to so i don't use this that much anymore but it's, it's still kind of nice to have what's cool about it is it's totally modular you can move these pieces around and rearrange them however you want. Say you want it over here, you can do that. Um, it's it's kind of a neat little tool. Um, I'm glad I have it, I just don't use it that much. All right, so let's talk about the negatives in this whole setup really quickly, and let's start with the lights. The first problem with these lights is they are really hot. I could probably replace them with LEDs, but there's a few different problems here. One is that they're way too close. So this is sort of a, a little bit in the weeds of a, a lighting thing, but there's, there's an inverse square law when it comes to light, which is basically, I'm gonna murder this, but it's, it's something like uh, for every doubling of length, you lose like four times the light or something like that. Anyway, the further away the light is, the more power you lose. With it being set up like this, as, as you all know in my videos, I tend to slide around a lot. I don't sit in one spot. I kind of move forward and move back. Well, the problem is when I'm over here, up close to the computer, I'm like, I can almost touch it. It's, it's, literally, it's literally right there, right? Whereas if I move back, I'm now literally twice as far away. What I want to do is move these lights back. Now, the problem with that is that this light over here, I could probably move back kind of back where shot A is over there. That would probably be just fine. Uh, by the way, this, these are blackout curtains. This is normally closed. I just kind of usually leave it open a little bit during the day. Uh, but I always close them when I record because the sunlight changes and it can, uh, you know, it'll, it'll look like a really bad jump cut from one thing to another. But anyway, so this light could move back without being too much trouble. This one, on the other hand, if I just moved it straight back in a, in a fill light fashion, it would be like right here <laughs> in the middle of the room, and that does not work. So what's in these boxes are some new lights that will replace these lights. They are more of a flat panel kind of light setup. They are more LED focused, so they should be cooler uh, temperature wise. Um, so maybe I won't sweat my nards off in this room every single time I record a video. And um, here's the cool part. I mentioned earlier about me being lazy and wanting to just hit a switch right here on my desk to turn them all on. Uh, these are all from Elgato, the same company that makes that cam link thing. And there's a thing called the Stream Hub, I think it's, or the Stream Deck, that's what it's called. And I'll be able to literally press a button on the Stream Deck that will be sitting on my desk and it will turn all these lights on at once. And I'm gonna have to play with it and see how it works. Uh, I'm thinking I might be able to connect one up here, maybe on that, on either hanging from the ceiling or from the uh, curtain rod over there. This one, I might be able to connect over here, so it's gonna be across the room, I'll get a little bit of distance. The lighting setup's gonna be different. I'm not completely sure how well it's gonna work. <laughs> it might be a total fail, and I might wind up going right back to this. Um, that's possible. But. All right, so the last thing that I wanna show real quick, um, and this will be the final nail in the coffin for why it's time to undo all this, is uh, the big problem with having this, comp this particular setup with this laptop computer running everything, which can we just kind of stop and pause and be amazed for a second that I've been running this, this channel for three years off of a laptop, just a laptop? <laughs> the more I think about it, the more insane the whole thing sounds. 
But uh, the final nail in the coffin for this whole setup is, well, this. So as I mentioned before, I've got everything running through that eGPU, which the more I think about it, it was probably a giant waste of money because it really has not fixed any of the problems. It did kind of streamline a little bit. The problem is because all of those hard drives that are underneath are going through the eGPU and because the eGPU has so much, um, or uses up so much of the graphics processing when I'm on you know, browsers and stuff like that, this is what I have to do every time I'm done shooting something and when I take this computer and go use it like a laptop computer, like say go to the coffee shop or just go downstairs or just sit anywhere else in the world but right here. All right, so first of all, I have to, um, I have to close out and eject all of those hard drives that are on the thing. So I have to go through here, just show you how this works. I gotta go through here and I gotta eject, 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 eject. As you can see, this takes a minute kind of annoying. And this one, for some reason, it, you know, I have to force eject it every single time. It's this whole procedure. And then I go up here, there to go, there you go. And you click on that to disconnect the AMD Radeon Pro 580, which is actually that Blackmagic eGPU. But when you do that, take a look at what happens to uh, any browsers that are open. It goes away. Oh, it's going to prove me wrong now, isn't it? Thanks for making me look stupid. Typically what happens is whatever browsers I have open um, close. And in fact, I can't believe the OBS just came back up. Um, what, what this means is that like, I basically have to restart my computer every single time I unhook it and go in the other room. For all of those reasons, it is time to get a new computer. One that won't glitch when I'm trying to record, one that will let me actually have something open while I'm recording instead of flipping out on me. Something that will uh, help me to edit a little bit faster and uh, process things faster. Something that is here all the time. But with this new setup, what I'm actually going to do is I've got a new camera. It's a 4K camera that I'm gonna be putting up there in the place of the old one. I'm taking that old one and I'm gonna be setting it up right there. And I can hook that up to the computer, just like that camera is, so that when I'm recording on OBS and I want to go to Tangent Cam, all I have to do is just click the little button on OBS and it will pick up this camera and I'll be able to just bounce back and forth. There won't be any setting up of new cameras, there won't be any transferring of footage or anything. I can do it all right there. And actually, since the computer is going to have a FaceTime camera on it, you know, the little FaceTime camera, um, I will technically have a three camera setup. So anyway, I think that officially covers everything on this setup and why I'm doing the changes that I am, uh, how this whole thing kind of evolved over the years and how it got to where it is right now. I honestly can't think of anything that I skipped. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrap up recording this and I'm gonna get started putting all this thing together. I am so excited. I've got all my videos for December shot and it's like, I'm just gonna be spending the next week or so just reworking this whole room, first getting this whole setup in place and then something to do with all this mess. Can't wait to share it with you. Can't wait to see if it works. I hope it works. Uh, but anyway, there you go. There'll be more in the future. This is what you guys asked for. I hope it was relevatory in some way <laughs> and uh, maybe helped you out a little bit. Oh, hey, one, one thing I can point out just real quick. I have this nice desk chair that I bought and I use to sit in when I'm doing my work and whatnot, but this is actually what I use to record on. Now what I used to do, and I may have talked about this somewhere before, but I used to have a much cheaper chair that the back would come off of. So whenever I recorded, I would pick that back up, set it over here somewhere, and then I just use that bottom sh uh, side of the chair, the, the chair part of it, with the rollers on it to roll around down here while I'm recording. Um, this one does not allow you to do that, so I bought this. It is not comfortable, <laughs> but uh, it works. So this is actually what I sit in when I record and I have to move that over here, which as junky as the room is right now is a bit of a challenge. But anyway, there you go. I'm gonna wrap this up now and um, wish me luck putting all this together. I'm, I'm excited to get started on it. So uh, you guys have a good one and uh, I'll talk soon.